Hi, welcome to Date Night. I'm Will. And I'm Amy. And we've been married for 13 years. 13 long years. Yeah, and after all those long years, we felt like we needed some adventure in our marriage. So every couple of weeks, we send our kids out of the house to the sitter's house. And we go upstairs to the playroom. Yep, and we clear off the table. And we explore a whole new world together. Just the two of us. And me, your best buddy and longest role-playing companion. Yep, and Mike. And me, your favoriteest nephew. And our nephew. Your favoriteest nephew. Our favoriteest nephew, Sam. And, of course, a mysterious force from beyond the veil, also known as your half-niece-in-law, Eva. Yeah, and our whatever Eva is to us. <laughs> <laughs> and we play... Dungeons and Dragons. To keep the kids from stealing my chocolate-covered raisins, I told them that they're chocolate-covered slugs. That's good. Yeah, they wanted them. <laughs> because they didn't I believe like it. Can you can borrow it. If I can say that without dying. Let's play Dungeons and Dragons! Are but you? wait, I haven't finished leveling to four yet. Let's wow. finish leveling to four. But I have seven options and I can't think. What are your options? Wait, hold on. Seven. The seventh option. He rolled an eight. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I rolled a seven. Rolled. I rolled this. <laughs> eight. I did roll an eight sided die, but. Oh, I was looking I at can control. increase one of my ability scores, or I can dual wield, which is plus one to AC, so I'll have a 14 instead of a 13. Um, which and means. She's had these written down for days, so making the decision in the next few minutes is not like. All right. Get hit up. Again, I rolled a seven, so go with option number seven. I'm pretty seven. sure that's, that's divine will <laughs> right there. See, I've had so many other things to do that by the time I finally have a chance to sit down and look at this stuff, I've forgotten that I should sit down <clears> and look <throat> at this stuff. Well, we're not fighting right now. Okay. So if you want to get started and <clears throat> make sure that you don't forget to add something. I punched someone. <laughs> Okay. Yo, hey. Well, I think that that was a big mistake. <laughs> 19 initiative okay, roll. Now we're in. <laughs> we just went through two of those. I am going to turn you into sausages now. I didn't really hit him. I was, that, was a, <laughs> that was a joke for a joke podcast. Oh, okay. Well, Sam, none of this is real. What? What? <laughs> I am transported every time I sit down at this table to a world with two moons. And <laughs> One of them is named Steve. And lots of hats. I like that uh, post you had about the Wasn't Aurora Borealis or whatever it was that was named Steve. Yeah. Okay. So you guys made it back to town. You cleansed the stone. You finished the quest that I had titled The Knowledge of uh, Auntie M. So now you're back in Raven Tree. Hello, I've had a long Ray. rest. It is morning. I have a hangover. You want a hand? You have a single like shot that? and you have a hangover? It's like hey, real we life. Didn't, we what didn't. was in that? <laughs> <laughs> it was a stein of vodka. Oh, I thought it was a shot. Okay. It was just a, a stein shot. of It was vodka. an ogre shot. ogre shot. And I didn't say I didn't have another one right after. You kind of did, because you said I had a shot and then I went to bed. <laughs> 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 And then I came downstairs again because I had a bad dream about my shadow attacking me. It happens. Or a car swerving near me. Good morning! I hate oh, you. I hate morning people. Uh, <laughs> in real life, she's not a morning person. <laughs> so what do you want to do in Raven Tree here? Is there any downtime things you need to do or anybody you want to talk to? Is there any story out what which, you're doing next? Which any, stone? any quivers that you need refilling for your arrows while we're here? Yes, I'll go pretend, fill my pretend quiver. Okay. Since we're pretending that we're actually keeping track of Are there of any traveling salesmen that we should know about? That when have you, weird accents? When you go outside, Jerry and Jenny's gem and junk juicer has pulled into town. Yeah. Oh, not them again? Oh, good. That's my monkey boy again. Oh, no. You called it. <laughs> so I did. I was hoping for the bad guy. <laughs> Maximilian? Yeah. Jerry and Jenny. So I'm still really curious on what Atalanta's whisker was. Oh, bag. Not bad. No, bag. B-A-G-G-G-G-G. 
Do you oh, know Google. how hard it is to find a good juicer around here? This is great. <laughs> so, where's, where's the good part? She's a vegetarian. When you go outside, I mean, like she said, this is you a do good see the why is it good? gem and junk juicer truck, which is the arcane wagon that's pulled by just the arcane power in it. Um, and outside of the gem and junk juicer, you see a little stand. It looks kind of like a, a slapdash lemonade stand. Um, it's just basically like plywood and half the size that's actually needed for Dougley the monkey boy to sit behind it, but that doesn't stop him. He's behind it anyway with his knees above the counter. Um, and it reads in very misspelled words, turn two useless magic items into something new. Cost 25 gold pieces. And then there's the gem and junk juicer there, and there's a one-armed individual um, sort of just sitting in the middle of town, not doing anything. Who's new? So do we want to go get some juice? Juice! 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 Let's go! Okay. Uh, Jerry is manning the gem and junk juicer, and he says... Oh, hello. It is good to see you again. Hey, we saw your brother on the road some time ago. I don't have brother. I get a Goliath guy. Oh, William. Yes. Yes, I saw him this morning. He got up uh, early, and we threw rocks into the water. Eh? What? You threw rocks in the water? Is is that William over there? He's still throwing rocks into the creek. I was trying to remember. He has lived in Glass House a long time. He's missed, you know, the simple pleasure (laughs) of throwing rocks. You've missed. You've been waiting for that, haven't you? (laughs) Maybe. When he said it at first, I thought it was awfully specific. (laughs) Now I understand. So anyway. You just hear little splashes over in the uh, Kokiku River as... And larger splashes as the Goliath throws in big rocks and an occasional chortle. <laughs> He'd make a big yes, splash. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, you here to uh, get more juices? All right, yeah, all right. So, I haven't actually met you before. Oh, it is good to meet good. you. Uh, we make juice here. Uh, we sell juice, special juices, if you want, if you like, or we can turn uh, useless uh, magic items uh, into juice. Uh, je- oh, so th- uh, that's new. Uh, Dudley does that. It's not really juice what he does. You'd have to talk to Dudley about that. I don't really know what he's doing. Dudley, uh, you talk to nice people if they like. And he just is picking his nose up to his second knuckle. <laughs> He's got a big nose. He does. <laughs> um, he says, but uh, what we do is we take gems and junk, we put it uh, in the magic juicer, and sometimes you get magic item, and sometimes it's just juice. Well, I like juice. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, transmute juicer that can do anything up to uh, common or uncommon, uh, even occasionally a little better magic items. For about a hundred gold in gems or junk, you can either, you might get juice, you might get common magic item. If you stick in about 400 gold pieces of gems and junk, you might get uncommon magic item. I don't know. We never know until we juice it. Does the monkey boy, does he cost money too? Uh, the, the monkey boy, he's uh, taking magic items you don't need. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people juice things, they get something, they don't like it so much. They take it over to him, and he's got some kind of thing, he melts them, mm-hmm. and he gives you different magic items. Does he have some Does he have kind a cost? of... Yeah, he charges just a small uh, bit of money. I think he's 25 gold pieces to turn two useless magic items into a new magic item. <laughs> Does he have, like, some kind of certification to do that? He's a monkey boy. (laughs) Okay. Would you take 250? Who? You. 250 worth of gold. It's not what I take. It's what... How much you put in the juicer makes how special magic item is. It's not... uh, I cannot bargain with juicer. I'll buy the... um, Can I bargain with the juicer? 
I don't let anybody... <laughs> I have a charisma of six. Can I bargain with the juicer? <laughs> uh, you could stick hand in juicer see what happens, but Ow. probably not. Well, if Blue didn't do it, this would. I'd like to buy uh, an uncommon magic item, please. Okay, you have 400 uh, gems. Or ge- you must put a little junk in there just to kind of uh, sweeten it up a little. And I'll give him a wet watermelon seed. Okay. It's dried at this point. No, it's still wet. <laughs> Oddly enough... <laughs> Oh, this will really... I don't know what this will do. Let's go see. And he walks into the back. <coughs> and you hear the... <coughs> of the juicer running, crushing the gems and the watermelon seed up. And you feel this compulsion to turn around and look at Dougley the monkey boy. And oh, I need everybody to roll up like this no! constitution saving throw. 20. <laughs> oh my gosh, are you kidding me? 11. Um, Fifteen. I got a three plus, but I just upped my constitution modifier, so that's a six. Okay. That's still uh, nine. Yeah, you retch onto the ground and take, um... I take one, damage? One psychic damage as you look at the glory that is Dougley the Monkey Boy. <laughs> okay. And while the whole time he's doing it, um, he's everybody else can sort of stomach it. But the whole time he's doing it, he's just kind of making terrible noises to go along with the crunching in the back. So, uh, Jenny comes back out, and I need you to roll a d20, Sam. Three. Okay. Um, You have received... uh, I'll just go ahead and... Let Jenny talk to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was just juice this time there, buddy. And uh, Jenny is a sprightly uh, elvish woman. And she hands over the juice. <laughs> she says, that's some bit of Western accent. Yeah. Um, this, one, uh, this one will help you out if you run out of that uh, magic powers inside of you, you know. This is uh, a potion of great and greater potency. <clears throat> and uh, it'll give you back a second level spell. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else need any more juice? Yeah, I'll, I'll go for that. Okay. What are you handing over there, fella? Four, 400 gems, and I got a little bracelet. Okay. Oh, this bracelet is really shiny. This could make it shiny. It looks like you like shiny stuff. I do like shiny things. All right. I'll just <laughs> go take this in the back. Dudley, you leave them alone this time, okay? All right, so she goes into the back, and you hear the crunching noise of the gem and junk juicer. And monkey's, uh, Monkey Boy is visibly upset, but he's he's turned away from you for the most part and sitting back at his little slapdash stand. So roll a d20, Mike. Nine. And uh, Jerry comes back out, and he's holding a vial. He says, oh, it was uh, just uh, juice this time. Uh, sometimes you just get juice, you know. Uh, this one, though... This one really will make uh, make your breath hot, he says. If you drink it, it will put it sort of uh, on fire, I guess I could say. It's a potion of fire breath. And this is in the Dungeon Master's Guide, which... Did you bring? No. Okay, um, page 187. But we could look it up on somebody's phone. If you want. It's okay. called Potion of Fire Breath. Or okay, anyone else? Uh, oh me, me, me! Okay, you want to uh, put something in the juicer? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have any. I well, actually, no. I'm gonna give him 400 gold worth of gems because okay. I mostly have gems, and about an entire cow's worth of old, old beef. Oh, this will really uh, give it some character, I think. All right. Hey, uh, aged beef is good beef. I go back. Uh, aged, not rotten. It's been there a it's, long it's, time. It smells like something. I go put it back in juicer. I guess. She should really be taking a charisma uh, uh, hit for, for character. It's around the beef. <laughs> <laughs> I already have a minus two to charisma. What yeah. more do you want? Go ahead and double that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you hear the. Everybody make a charisma save as Dougley tries to get you to turn around and focus on him. Nat 20! 
This Thirteen. time, I guess I throw so up. So she got a nat 20. Can Dudley retch this time? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just to get you to turn this around. This time, and Dudley look at retches him. at the smell of my pounds and pounds of old, old beef. This is the s- step I skipped last time. Eight. Eight? No, that's okay. Phew. You don't have to turn around. Dudley's just kind of... <laughs> And then uh, Jenny comes back out and roll a d20, Eva. I'm not going to get another 20, am I? Uh, nine. Nine, okay. Oh, yeah, we got you a, a rather fancy little uh, potion here. You're already kind of a, a big uh, lady, but if you drink this, you'll be even bigger. And it's cool. a potion of growth. Or a growth potion, and that is also in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Because she needs to be even bigger. Like, how big are we talking? Oh, you'll have to read the label on there, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it. All right. Uh, does anybody else uh, need to uh, run the juicer there? Sure. All right. Uh, what you got to put in? <clears throat> I'll go all in, and I'll give you 350 gold worth of gems. 40 gold of junk and a feather. Oh, that'll do it, I think. Okay. I'm going to go... You, Dudley, you leave them alone now. You leave them alone. They might want to come and, ta- and talk to you later. Okay, so she goes in the back and you hear the... Crunching. And roll a d20. Six. Okay. Eat these a lot of juice today, you hear uh, Jerry say. He's a lot of juice. Sometimes when life gives you gems, you make You roll gem bad. Egg, right? You know? Uh, you get uh, this one, though. It could get you out of a tough spot. It's a potion of greater healing. Uh, you drink this, you get back uh, 4D4 plus 2. I don't know what those numbers mean. But this is what it says on bottle. <laughs> Does anyone else need to make any more juice? So there was the juicer, there was Dudley's little shack, and then you said there was another... There was a one-armed man in the middle of town? Philium. Yeah. No, not Philium. No, he has two arms. Philium is by the river, throwing so rocks. rocks yeah. Does he look like he's selling anything? No, he looks like he's just sitting there, kind of drawing his finger in the dirt. All right, I'll go ahead and... I want to make something else. I'm going to go ahead and put my last... 175 of gems into this thing. Okay. Just 100. Just, okay, 100. We'll run the on the lower level. Okay. I don't have any junk. Here's a feather. Cool. Here's a feather. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe this will make you tickle on the way down. I don't know. All right. Let's go back. Uh, I need everybody to make charisma save, please. 13. 11. 11. Uh, 9. Okay. Oh, wait, a charisma? Mm-hmm. Nine. Oh, okay. That's good enough. You don't have to look at Dudley despite the noises he's making behind you. And what did you roll for your item? Nineteen. Okay. Um, Jenny comes back out, and she has a little bag. She says, oh, look, uh, this is uh, kind of the opposite of juice. It's uh, pretty dry, actually. Uh, it's... Uh, Oh, let me see. And she opens it up, and there's some dust inside. She says, oh, this is dust uh, you can use to uh, kind of vanish if you need to. That could always come in handy, I guess. Sometimes you just don't want to be there, and you can disappear. So this is called Dust of Disappearance, Dungeon Master's Guide 166. Okay. I would like to do another 400. Oh, you got some more fancy How do you uh, have so there. much gold? He, he loose everything. <laughs> and takes it all. Looks like you are the rich fella in your party, huh? Don't tell them. Oh, no, it's our We're watching secret. you make this exchange, <laughs> sir. You and everyone else here knows. All right, so uh, what kind of junk you got to put in with it? Uh, I give one of my bells. Oh, yeah, that has a good ring to it. Okay. She goes back to the back, <laughs> and you hear the... And roll a d20, please. 13. Everyone or just him? Just him. Okay. Oh, Uh, oh, look, it's not juice. It's not juice. It's a little... It made a little tingle sound in the bottom of the cup. Do you hear that? What is it? And you hear... uh, Or you see Jerry come back out, and he hits his head on one of the 
cross beams in his cart. Oh, it's hard being a Goliath in this little thing. Uh, but they have this uh, here. Is a uh, Beastmaster belly button ring. It's very good. <laughs> what? It's very good. It is long description, though. We might uh, need to uh, just take a picture of this thing <laughs> so you can have it. But basically, uh, you roll a d6, uh, and this will recharge if you roll a 6 on your long rests, and then you can use it. Okay. Uh, it only can keep one charge at a time. If you have it, and it's charged, you roll a d8, and you will summon an animal who will fight for you. It is a spectral version of a normal animal, but otherwise has the characteristics listed in the monster manual. Okay. And I suppose I'll hang on to that, and then you roll the dice, and you won't know what kind of things come out, just kind of like the blunderbuss until you do it. Okay. <laughs> so, so, roll a d6. Yeah, on your long rests. Every time you have a long rest, mm-hmm. you can try and charge the item. If you get a six, it's charged. And then whenever you want, while it's tra- it'll hold that charge until you use it. You can roll a D8 and summon a random animal off of this list that will help uh, fight for you. Is it charged now? It's not charged right now. But you can put it in your belly button if you want. It doesn't take up a Is your belly button other pierced? Slot. It is now. <laughs> I think uh, Dudley does piercings if you need it. <laughs> you go over to Dudley and get a piercing from him. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice sterile environment. <laughs> he stabs a dirty <laughs> needle through your belly button. I would have done that for free. Constitution saving rolls that warm out <laughs> tetanus and staff. And yeah. <laughs> Can I go to Dudley too? Sure. No. What does the sign say again? It says. Turn two useless magic items into something new. Cost 25 gold pieces. What about a useless wizard? Mm. Oh. <laughs> what about potion? No, because they have to be items. But it's a jar with magic in it. <laughs> no juice, it says on the sign in small print. No juice. Oh. That wasn't means, there before. This means potions, too. <laughs> and it's spelled too close to looking like juice instead of juice. It's kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> I have a wooden Xbox controller. Does that have any sort of magic? Mm. <laughs> when did you get that? I'm, th- I'm having a stroke. <laughs> um, I do remember giving that out, but I don't remember where. Troll hole, I think. See, I don't need that good Does the Dragon King staff that I picked up have any magic? They're cousins. It would qualify. All right. What? <laughs> so I'm going to put that and... Don't you remember? That was the troll. No, I really don't. <laughs> um, do those bloody or yellow robes that I have have any kind of magic? It's, okay. magic? it's just bloody. Do any of those bells that I have have magic in them? The one you're wearing. <laughs> do you have any lucky charms? Mm-hmm. No, you never get his lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> He's got two lucky charms now. A bell and a ring. All right, I've got safe word chains. Those are magic. And Those safe word shackles. Yeah, I'll, give, I'll give that and the dragon cane up. Okay. And the I, gold. No. I thought the dragon cane was awesome. Wasn't it? What's the dragon cane? It's like a melee weapon. Oh, that's right. It was a melee weapon, and it was better. Th- I'll give my wooden dagger up that feels like metal. That's not magic. That's feels- just a dagger that you had. That was that enchanted you- to feel like metal. I thought it was painted to look like no, metal. No, it feels like metal. No, you did say it felt like metal. I have that in my notes right here on the original. Does on it the say OG. enchanted? It says, wooden dagger, M, which is my magic Feels like metal in parentheses. Okay, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> Ten years later, and I still don't know what I want to do for level four. Okay, uh, so you hand over those two items. Yes. To Dudley and twenty-five gold pieces. Yes. And he puts them down below the stand, and you hear this sound starting to sizzle, kind of like a panini grill. <laughs> and, it, and he's just shifting around really excitedly. <laughs> and the noise of the Panini grill type sound is getting louder and louder, and he's getting louder and louder. <laughs> and I need you to roll a d20. 14. Okay. 
Um, he reaches down below, and you see him pull his hand back like it was really hot. <laughs> and he reaches back down and grabs something. It looks in uh, all ways just like the dragon staff that you're holding. Um, and it shares its attributes in terms of like the damage it does if you use it as a melee weapon. Mm -hmm. However, once per day you can use it to make a minor fudge in your math that only if it applies to using this weapon. You can fudge it by an amount up to your intelligence modifier. So you could add it to your chance to hit, your damage, or anything else that you try to use the weapon to do. Um, This is in addition to whatever usual modifiers you'll have. And it's called a weapon of math destruction. <laughs> oh. oh, the puns. Yeah. <laughs> Why the puns, Will? Could you tell me what the um, damage is on that? The, on the staff? Yeah. I think it was a 1d8. Right. If you used it with two hands. Okay. Is everybody done shopping, or is anybody still shopping? I'm good. I'm I'm out of money. Do I have Um, time to read my journal of Glenn? Yeah, you want to try to look at that? But I've got a misty ring I'm missing, which is actually kind of useless, because it only lasts for a turn. So if you have one more magical item, that would be a... Take my dragon bone staff. Since I've got this new one. Are you sure? He's He's got a new one that just has a a new enchantment on it. Mm. He's going to loot 400 things before the end of the episode. (laughs) He's going to be richer than all of us by the end of the episode. Okay. All right, and 25 gold pieces. So, Dugley sticks that back under the... um, Pinini press? Yeah, under the uh, counter, and you hear the... sizzling sound as he's melting your magic items here, and he's getting more and more expectant as the sizzling is getting louder. He can hardly contain himself, but please roll a d20. Four. So he starts uh, channeling, it seems like, and speaking in multiple mysterious voices at the same time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And you just kind of hear, like, things that sound like creepy Latin. I'm taking a step back. And he starts writing furiously on a piece of parchment. And after a moment, he rolls it up and ties a little ribbon on it and hands it out with a snap of his wrist to you. And you take it. Very hesitantly. And it says on the outside, Dudleyton. Okay. <laughs> Open. Okay. Uh, it says, one time, you know, when you read it, this scroll will dis- self-destruct. It will create hallucinatory terrain. Um, so basically, you can use the spell from the book, which is hallucinatory terrain, but instead of looking like whatever terrain it would look <laughs> like in the book, it looks like Dudleyton, which is a psychedelic jungle with undulating banana trees and frightening whoops and moans. <laughs> That's like a fifth level spell, isn't it? It's a pretty good spell. Awesome. It's a one time use spell scroll. Was mine once per day, by the way? Yes. Or long rest. Yeah. There's a difference. What's the original spell called? The original spell is called Hallucinatory Terrain. But you get a psychedelic jungle with undulating banana trees and frightening whoops and moans. <laughs> How do you come up with this? I just you don't want to know about anything on the Dugley list. <laughs> How long is the Dugley list? It's 20. Okay, is that it for the shopping? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, I'll put the shopping stuff away. I don't know if that shopping stuff stays in the regular episodes or goes in the bonus or what, but we'll have it. Alright, gem and junk juice. Here. 
What does my weapon look like? Like, the what does it look dragon like? dragon bone cane? Yeah. It basically looks like just a bone from a dragon with a carving in the top that looks like a dragon head. It's kind there, of cool looking. Can there be, like, numbers all across it? Like, etched into it? Yeah. It's the oh, yeah, it. now. Sure. Yeah. yeah, now it's got formulas that are wrong. <laughs> A squared plus B plus B so squared plus B B squared, B squared <laughs> equals ten. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what it says on it. <laughs> A squared plus B squared equals ten. I love that. <laughs> I'm writing that in. So, do you guys want to go talk to that one-armed person? I'm gonna read the journal of Glenn. Okay. Um. When you go to open it, it doesn't seem to want to open, and some uh, illusory script pops up on top of it. And it says that it can only be opened by a rock seeker. But he's a stone dwarf person thing. A mountain dwarf? Yes, that. <laughs> rock seeker. And it has on it the journal of Glenn Rock Seeker. Oh, so it has to be someone from his family. I assume. It's... Sorry, Lass, I can't read this one just yet. We need to find a, a, a rock seeker. Is that one word or two? One. Okay. Aren't we all rock seekers when it comes down to it? I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure this has to do with clan. <laughs> no, not just... People who look for rocks. <laughs> I could be wrong. Though. And you hear another splash in the river and a chortle from the guy <laughs> throwing rocks. Is Jenny stare now, stare, still nearby? Yeah, she's in the truck. Blue squared. <laughs> Is Jenny also a Goliath? No, she's, she's an, an elf. elf. Oh, yeah, you said that. Uh, what is her relationship to Jerry? That's unclear. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I'm, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not very familiar with my elven heritage. Do you know what this means? And I show her my sword. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, an elvish sword there. It's very nice. Uh, that's, that's just an old elvish name. That's probably uh, the family name of who the sword belonged to. Oh. I think... Uh, this was a clan that uh, lived in this area long, long ago. Uh, it's sort of a minor nobility, if you could call them that. And don't know anything else about it? The nobles mine around here? Well, <laughs> they didn't... I'm a dwarf, it fits me character. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do much of the mining themselves, you know, but they oversaw some of it, of oh, course. Yeah. And the, the smiths were mostly where they were. Oh. Where they were at. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's just a, a really nice sword uh, from a, a really old elven family. What's the name of the family? That's what's written on the sword there. But what is it? She doesn't read elvish. <laughs> She's an elf. She's an orc. I'm talking about her. She doesn't read elvish. What is it? Aruneva? Arunea. Oh, Slash and Dash. <laughs> no, that's the other one. Oh. Arunea. Arunea. Yeah, that's the family name. There's no magic in it? Arithia Did she roll like an 11 or something? No. Okay. 12. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Date Night. I'm Amy. And I'm Will, your friendly neighborhood game mom, reminding you that if you ever find yourself in a Home Alone-esque situation where Daniel Stern is invading your house, D4s make excellent substitutions for Caltrops. When we first started way back in November and December of last year, 2017, we never thought that this would actually get to episode 25 and that we'd be having this much fun. We're also totally blown away that we've hit 10,000 downloads, and it's all thanks to you, our listeners. To show our appreciation, we decided to give away some great D&D prizes. Yep, and we've drawn the names of two lucky winners. The first is our runner-up. Our runner-up will receive the prize Bloodlines, which is my most extensive title on the Dungeon Masters Guild. 
It includes six homebrew races, three backgrounds, and 25 titanic feats to really help you customize your characters. And the winner of that copy of Bloodlines is Tim at the Internet. And that's uh, Twitter user at Moth. So congratulations, Tim. Um, you'll receive that PDF copy of that book. Our grand prize winner will receive 20 sets of Wiz Dice in a pretty nifty bag of holding dice bag. And our grand prize winner is Penguin Party, which is Twitter user at Partly Penguin. Winning entrants can contact us via direct message on Twitter at D8 Night Podcast. Thanks again for everything you've done to support the show. Keep sharing with your friends and tweeting about us with the D8 Night Podcast hashtag. We'd love to keep growing and have another celebratory giveaway soon. Our next episode will come out on September 28th. Until then, check out our website at datenightpodcast.com and brace yourselves. You're about to hear the worst NPC voice in history. Okay, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to go make a new friend. So I'm going to go walk up to the guy with one arm with my charisma of six. Okay, charisma. <laughs> well, I kind of need the general, so I'll go ahead and follow, I guess. Okay. You see, um, he's still got, like, bloody bandages where the arm used to be, so it doesn't look like it just happened. Like, it looks like it's dried up, but it's not that old of a injury. Um and he's just sort of rocking back and forth on the ground a little bit, drawing in the dirt. What is he drawing? Just uh, weird, like, faces with horns on them. I use my new cantrip, and I make it go, <laughs> and then, <laughs> You are a terrible person. <laughs> I, I, knew that I, I knew it wasn't a good idea to draw those things. Oh, hey, uh... Hey, buddy, how's it going? Oh, it's okay. It's uh, uh, it's uh, it's 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 better here. It's better here. It's better here than where? Oh, then down to the south. I was I came from down there in the south, and now I'm here. It's better. What are you drawing? No, oh, I don't know. I'm just trying to I pass the time until I get up the strength to go maybe further north from here, further even further north. Okay. See okay? Yeah, I know that totally just <laughs> uh you could roll an insight check, I guess. I keep accidentally wiping my character sheet with my hands uh, while I take a picture so I don't forget. That's a six. You don't know no. what's up, I guess. Oh insight. Can I try 12. to make him feel can I try to comfort him? Sure. There there, it's okay. <laughs> there there. I don't know. Is there a comforting crawl? I guess it's just charisma. (laughs) (laughs) Eight? Oh, oh, I guess you're nice and everything. Um, yeah, I I was, uh, I was in the South for a while. I was a a bard um, for a troop of, I mean, a a, a clan of uh, goblins and a hobgoblin. He was their leader of La Puba, I think he was. Anyway, it wasn't a bad job, but they, (laughs) sometimes they threw things at me, but some of those things were rather tasty, I guess. I hate this guy. (laughs) uh, Hi. Uh, Some of those, uh, uh, but for the most part... It's okay, it's okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, what happened there, and how did your voice get so annoying? Because well, I know no one uh, paid you to sing with this the voice. voice is kind of always been... Uh, I, I'm not really a singer. It was more of them. I told stories. <laughs> but, um... I'm not so good at that anymore. So here, here, try uh, this, try this. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Better? Yeah, I was really weird, stuttering song. British Mickey Mouse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, well, I was there, and uh, the, the Hobgoblin had heard of uh, unrest in the further in the south and decided <laughs> that he was going to go, and I think he said, put down sort of an uprising, I believe, were the words that he used. Put and, down an uprising in the uh, south? Yes, and we... 
The problem was he wanted me to go with them. He said, you know, record their, their fine deeds and sing them songs and, and clean up after them and things. And so I went and um, they thought it would be easy like most little uh, uprising, but... This is unlistenable in real life. <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad for the listeners right now. <laughs> Stop listening. It's okay. No one else is suffering. Everyone else has turned it off. I'm having to, like, legit focus on... I'm sitting next to you. I turned out. (laughs) I think I'm more... I think I'm more lip-reading you than actually hearing you at this point. (laughs) But they didn't... They didn't win. They're dead. They're all... They're dead. Oh, you're about to be dead if you don't shut up! I sometimes would welcome, maybe welcome to a thing. <laughs> Can I just put him out of his misery, please? I have an extra second level spell just, slot now. I just got a vivid mental image of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I welcome that. <laughs> it's, like Winnie, it's like Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore's love child. <laughs> <laughs> Raised by Piglet. <laughs> Oh. oh, this play session has made my face hurt. <laughs> um, who was, who was, who were they fighting in the uprising? There was a great darkness. Stop. Uh, they kept, they killed many and they turned others, which was worse than death. <laughs> they killed many or, or many? No. <laughs> many. Uh, she was lovely. <laughs> okay. You can take your ears off now. Oh, because <laughs> you say you killed many. I'm like, it's right here. They captured a lot of. Uh, I they, I was the last one to be captured because I was the best at hiding, and they they sort of shackled me into the end of the line. But they only had the one shackle left, and 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 that's well, that's why I only have the one arm now. And I got away. I got away. Wait, who is they? Oh, there's the, the, some great darkness. But it, you see, the it's been moving to the north like more a light? and more. Yes, but it's not dead. All right, it's all too alive. I'm so sorry that I'm making this longer, guys. But I feel like we're supposed to get some kind of information out of this character. <laughs> But Sam's about to have a literal heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here right now, so I'm just videotaping this. Oh, man. I came back further, and I stayed in a cabin. <laughs> and I was there. I just hit him with my dragon bone staff. Oh, oh you're a terrible... I thought you were, like, like what? Chaotic I thought you were turning good, right? over a new leaf. Yeah. Are there unhidden people who are clearly prisoners of war and maimed? And I haven't heard a word this man has said. <laughs> he doesn't matter. Oh, he's, oh, like oh, a, oh, he's, a oh, he's a tortured Mickey Mouse, and you're going <laughs> to crack him upside the head with a dragon bone staff. All right. Well, I, I'm i going to have to stop you. That's you fine. Going. No, that's totally fine. Okay. Like, I don't want to hit him, but I'll, like, pull it out, and, like, uh, my hands are shaking. And you just my see arms him. are shaking. Go and kill Cleto Easy, lad. Maybe you should take a walk. I'll go take a walk. Maybe you should take a walk. Okay, I think hey. Sam might actually have to leave the table. The <laughs> Way to go, GW. Now he's crying. It's okay. Okay. I stayed in a cabin for a while. Then there were some orcs, and I was wary at first, but they... Now they ended up being rather nice. They were from this village, and they were scared of uh, 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 bandits. And uh, uh, they stayed with me. And I thought maybe it would be nice to have a, some companionship. And they could watch during the night, so I wasn't watching every day and night and day and night and day and night and night again and night and sleep. <laughs> uh, and, um, but I figured I would come here north when I could see on the horizon that the, the darkness was spreading and I would try my luck with the bandits or maybe they would let me, I don't know, tell them stories or clean their chamber pots or anything, anything to get away, away from the south. And I think I will continue to, to go north, further north, as soon as possible. Where there's ice, definitely ice. Okay. 
I think I've gotten as I've gotten as much information as I care to get from this guy. I don't think I'm sure there's more he could tell this us. This guy could tell us the the final boss lurks here <laughs> and this is where a thousand billion gold is and I wouldn't uh, you you probably revealed the rest of the storyline. <coughs> and I wouldn't know. Basically there's bad stuff south. There's bad yeah, duh. There's bad stuff everywhere. Well, I think we've now fixed east and west. We've fixed two-thirds of the bad stuff at this... Well, actually, no. We probably need to take the stone back, but then we would have fixed two-thirds of the bad stuff. We will have fixed. We will have had fixed. <laughs> um, there, there. There, there. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. It's been very challenging the last uh, a few months. I have been neglected. What, what is your name? This is slowly evolving from Mickey Mouse to the Queen to now it's some sort of weird hybrid bobcat gulp. <laughs> <laughs> My name? Yes. You've been very kind to me. Arin? Arin, okay. It is I'm lovely to, to talk to somebody who what is so know? kind and know? patient <laughs> with me. Uh, people tend not to want to hear my stories any longer. I don't think I will be traveling uh, as a bard for any more. No, I don't think you will either. Well, if I think All right, have a great day. The end of... And I'm gone. My Bye. career. Try being a mime, and I walk away. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So, uh, is, they're is, just standing is, there still. I know, is anybody... <clears throat> Has anybody been taking care of you here, lad? Um, they let me stay in one of the abandoned hovels, and they have brought me some food, and I have been very thankful. All right, then, you'll have a good one there. Uh, for my entertainment, can you just say sometimes I welcome death again? Well, sometimes I welcome death. <laughs> okay, so... And scene. Okay, so do we want to go take the stone back? <laughs> yeah, let's go take the stone I'm back. still at Jenny and Jerry's. Oh, let's you are? Go yes. Get her from Dudley and Did Yeah, sure. Also, Dave have you heard Busters. of anybody named Nivara Silverleaf? Me? No. No, not you. Uh, get out of here. Are you speaking to me? Really? Um, yum, yum, two by two? Or are you speaking to Jenny? To Jenny. Okay. Jenny Elf. <laughs> who, who now? Navara Silverleaf. Oh yeah, yeah. She uh, used to be in this uh, in this island. Uh, I don't know, a few hundred years ago. I think I've heard tales. This voice is like gold. <laughs> <laughs> what tales? It's like well, uh, she uh, was part of the uh, uh, the the temple there in the north there, where the uh, the monk fella. Philium, where he came from, she uh, stole some stuff from up there and ruined ruined the whole thing. Are we here for this conversation or no? Is it, wasn't I wait, guess we're not, huh? Wasn't that magpie meat meat lady? No, Andy? no, she just knew of her. Oh, okay. That's unfortunate. Okay. Wait, did we hear that or not? Yeah, we did. Sure, yeah, we were here. Oh. Okay. So yeah, what you had heard before was there was somebody. Who had gone up there and stolen one of the stones a few hundred years ago? The stone of uh, immortality. But you didn't really know who. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know. And then Auntie Meatmaker had taken a bunch of books from the temple of the oh, first okay. land. Okay. That might be what you're thinking of. So, well, I mean, maybe. This other elven lady pretty much sparked off the events of, of what's been going on, but she didn't really. Yeah, okay. How'd you know that name? Are you asking Jenny? <laughs> no, I'm asking oh. um, Kira. Oh, okay. Oh, you came back over to the wagon? Yeah, sure. I thought we established that we yeah, were we already left, over there. We left the one-armed Mickey Mouse. And, and I stayed at the here. wagon. I think this whole episode is just gold. It's guys. just a gold. <laughs> <laughs> Chronological this is mess. the worst one ever. <laughs> so... How did you know that name? 
She's my mama. Oh. That's unfortunate. Oh, that sucks. Hmm. Oh, that's terrible. I You're not even here. Get out of here. <laughs> you wandered up following you guys. <laughs> Trust me, lad. Go away. Go I think away. you guys can keep me safe, really. Oh, I'm just going to follow you. I oh, really, I really, told, I really <laughs> told I'm Vicky about to lose you. So to the south, there's some mushroom people. Go find them. They'll keep you safe. Okay. Okay. Or right, let's go. So let's I just guess leave. I let's can't go return here. this stone that your mom stole. And No, she stole the third one. Stole, okay. Yeah. Well, let's go return this one. I guess. Does anyone have an address? Well, what about Fillion? <laughs> What about him? We can go talk to him if you want. On our way out of town, he's over by the river. We got to go that way. Sure, why not? Yeah. I didn't plan to battle today. Let's anyway. give Will another fun accent. Plunk, <laughs> plunk, plunk. <laughs> I love throwing the rocks into the river. All right, glass houses. We get it, lad. Keep oh going. yes, yes. Um, you are back. You have survived speaking to Anti Meat Maker. Aye, it is impressive. I must say. She is not uh, to be trifled with. Well, she's a pile of ash now. And it is probably uh, better for it, though who knows with what is stirring she could have made the tenuous, if dangerous, ally. I told okay, you. Okay, thanks, GM. <laughs> told you we should have just put on a nice little musical. Um, but uh, what is the plan now? Well, we're going to go take this rock back to the stream. Right? That's a, a little Second s- temple. Aye, that temple one. of second lands. With streams. This is not a bad idea. You might uh, want to think about the fact that if that cult is still out there, they might corrupt it again. Okay, so let's bury it in the roots of the... Do you tree. have a better idea? Yeah, yes. I was talking to uh, Lani here in Raven Tree, who said maybe it would be possible to finish off the cult of the Black Hand. Oh, I like that idea. Um, it appears that uh, this cult is uh, it is obviously interested in spreading the blight, but it was not the same power of that in the South. It seems like this was something separate, and it could be that uh, you have already battled some of them, I have heard, yes? Aye. Mm. I don't know how too much about this cult, but it seems like they might not be as powerful as whatever is in the south. You might be able to handle them, but I do not know where you would find them. So what should we do in the meantime with this rock? I carried the thing up a mountain. I'm really not wanting to haul it all over Vol... 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 <laughs> Volyanaya. Uh, yeah, all over Volyanaya if I don't have to. I mean, you could leave stone with me here in Raven Tree. I'm not planning on going anywhere. Are you going to throw it into I the did lake? Like, I did the, the, like Hira's idea. It's tempting. <laughs> but no, I, I have self control. I can just throw regular rocks so long as they hold out. I did like Hira's idea of burying it at the roots of the Raven Tree and then maybe on top of that leaving. What's his name here to guard it? It is the safest place as any in this village. Aye. Seems like a good idea to me. Alright, let's go. Let's do that. Do you have a spell for that? I do have a spell for that. (laughs) I got a shovel. No. Oh, no. You don't need your shovel. (laughs) Didn't you break your hand a while back? You kind of dig very well. He dented a finger. But do you know what? And then I just... I say, watch this. And then I put both of my hands out, both the dented one and the non-dented one. And you see a five-foot cube of dirt just emerge from that the ground. That excessive. Move to the left. Throw it in. Go on. Are we at the raven tree, or are we just pulling oh, up random spots I, of dirt I here? guess you could have walked. Yeah, I, I thought okay. we I Yeah. That ain't. Pump. And then I drop just it back in. It. <laughs> no, no ceremony. You just see the uh, feeling of, well, it's into there. Yeah. It's into there. It's into there. <laughs> I'm, pro- I'm even proficient in religion. I was like, oh, pull. <laughs> and then I use the same spell to draw a very small red X right where I died. Oh, I see. Mark yeah, that that's there. exactly why we hit it. Thanks. Well, so you we remember. Remember that last an hour, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Freeze Wizard doesn't, and we'll neither did Sam, so he still did. <laughs> we'll be back fast. Okay, Philium, just remember where it is and guard it, please. Get it. It's at the bottom of tree. It's only big tree in middle of town. I got it. Until Winston walks over here, then there's two big trees in the middle of town. <laughs> <laughs> I feel somewhat obligated that we should ask him about Lady, mother of mine. Oh. All right, let's what's do your, what's it. What's her well, name again? Here you go. Here's your opportunity. I don't like her right now, but can you tell me more about Navarra Silverleaf? His name does not ring a bell. He's Lady the, that stole the Temple of the Third Land Stone of Undying Eternal Life or whatever. I heard that story, but I did not know who she was. Well, no, I did. Well, can you ask around? Butcher! Maybe? Is the butcher still here? I don't know. You'd have to go look. Let's go look for the butcher. He was around. Yeah, okay, yeah. Don't ask around. Just stay here. Okay, I stay here. Okay. Let's do, 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 do. A roll randomly to see if the butcher is still around. He is not. Well, he left fast. I got an eight tends to do that. You weren't. You're not. I really didn't find the butcher. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, let's go. Are we going back to the temple? We need to at least go back to Philly and say, "Hey, you don't have to wait here anymore. We're leaving." It doesn't make sense for us to go back to the temple because we purified the stone. You're correct. And there's nothing. We're not putting it back. So okay, so let's go kill the kill the gang. We have to find out where they are first, unless we just go tromping through the woods looking for cultists. I like Kip that idea. I like that idea, too. <laughs> Kip was going to the east to figure out what they were doing over there. Or we could go fight that big battle that was in the sky. Wasn't there, like, a city or something? <laughs> what? There was, like, a battle that told me the, about the, the battle. The games! Oh. Oh. We Ooh. forgot to read what the disc said after we got out of the mausoleum on a dark thing. I say we go east and look for cultists. We should go to that... You know that guy who, like, dressed up like one of the cultists? That's That's Kip. That's Kip in the east. Yeah, that one. I say we go that one. Well, so so are the games. The games are in the east, too, so maybe two turtles, one stone, right? (laughs) All right. I like when you say all right to your own jokes. (laughs) <laughs> I could give you some advice about telling jokes or stories. <laughs> or, or making voices. <laughs> I'm going to stop by Yohei and buy some liquor for okay, him. Okay, we're never going to leave town. And then we can leave. So we're, Are we're we there yet? Heading to the trade triangle? Heading east. east. That's where Kip said he was going. I'm sure. The trade triangle. How much does two bottles of liquor cost? You're loved in this town. You can get liquor for the road. Okay. But you won't need it. That guy isn't coming with us. He better not. Hello there. I'm Dern Hammerstone. Please keep listening to our adventures and share it with your friends. Thank you very much. And don't forget, I'm going to hit it with the hammer. <laughs>